Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to the fourth video in this series, the uh, Sharpening Masterclass series. In this video I am looking at a belt grinder method of sharpening chisels and uh, this will also ob obviously work on uh, plain blades and the like. Now. In this series, I'm going to be going through every single possible conceivable method of sharpening from belt grinders and power tools through to various types of stones. And, uh, <clears throat> and if you have an idea, if you think that I'm going to miss your favorite sharpening method, please mention it in the comments below. Now, a belt grinder to woodworker sounds scary and uh, this is a little bit a little bit silly really um, every single time I mention uh, using a powered grinder of any sort they go oh you're gonna you know or I should say we go because I am one of one of you um, oh that's just crazy I'm not gonna do that because that's gonna overheat my um, my chisel or my plane blade, I'm going to cause some bluing at the edge and we're going to lose our hardness and I'm going to ruin my tool forever and uh, it's just not worth doing. And uh, in this series we've seen uh, already the use of a, an actual bench grinder with no uh, flowing water etc to work and that does perfectly fine uh, as long as you're careful. And the same thing goes for a belt grinder. If you're careful and not a fool it should be fine. Now, the one I'm showing you here is the Robert Sorby Pro Edge, which is a fantastic tool. Um, and the reason I mentioned the brand is because this is a company that have been making chisels and planes and plane blades and the like. I, I want to say hundreds of years. It might not be hundreds, but it's definitely over a hundred. And the machines that they use to make their chisels and knives, etc. It's it's a belt sander, isn't that amazing? Oh, I sounded so facetious there. Ha! Anyhow, the people who make knives, that you will go and spend, you know, this is an artisan-made chef's knife. I'm going to spend two thousand dollars on it. It was made by a guy on a belt sander, okay, and then sent off to reheat, of course. So I'm sort of fudging it a little bit, but if you are careful. And if you've got water next to you and you don't linger on the belt for too long, there is, you're not going to overheat your tool. And if you're not careful, yes, you can. And then that's an argument. If you think that you are silly enough to linger for too long, um, and it actually needs to be quite a, you know, it's a surprising amount of time uh, and pressure to overheat um, the average sized chisel at least. Uh, then go for the other option, which is a, a, a water stone, a powered water wheel. They're called whetstone sharpeners. Anyhow, Tormac and Triton, and etc. People, there are various options about. Um, however, the reason why I love the belt sander is it is very fast. And uh, if you are taking an old chisel that has been sitting in somebody's drawer, uh, or opening paint cans, etc., for the last five or ten or twenty or fifty years, in order to get it back to the correct bevel, you cannot do it faster. I was about to say all more accurately, but there are accurate methods. You can't do it faster than using a belt grinder. Belt, yeah, a belt grinder, belt sander, etc. Um, and before I got the Sorby, I was also a little bit worried about using it and now it is in my life, I cannot imagine my life without it. Basically, you have a quick release system, it's fast to change the belt, and you've also got an easy system on the side here, which is a, a bunch of holes and an inbuilt wrench, and you can change the angle to whatever you like. Now, on the front of the tool, it says the top hole is 15 degrees, so it goes 15, 20, 25, 30, and it even tells you what those angles often are. Uh, this wasn't really meant to be an advert for the uh, Pro Edge, but frankly, it's an amazing machine, and if you can, if you can afford to go for top quality, then this, 
this, this is, you just can't be beat. Uh, 25 degrees or 30 degrees. Now, this chisel here is a mortising chisel. It's, for guitar building, I prefer chisels with a bevel edge, like this Ashley Isles tool, ashleyisles.co.uk. Um, or, but, every now and then you want a tool with a bit of welly. And this is a mortising chisel, you can bang it. And you don't want a fine edge. So, in this case, I'm gonna go for 30 degrees. And that means that the point isn't quite so delicate. It's not gonna be quite as easy to push through the wood, but with a mortising chisel, you're supposed to be hammering it anyway. So, I'm gonna set this to 30 degrees which is this hole here. And it's as easy as that. Tighten off. Now, this has got a little jig in there to hold the chisel square. Be aware that some chisels actually don't have a square edge, so you might have to move that around to, to find it. Okay, this is, this chisel has not been touched in many, 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 many years. Um, uh, it's a, well, it's a lovely old. <laughs> um, funnily enough, and I honestly hadn't um, planned this, this is an old Robert Sorby chisel. I'd literally pulled this out of my drawer of tools that I've bought at car boot sales. Um, Robert Sorby Sheffield. Well, there we go. The old and the new. It couldn't be better. Now, I've got a 60 grit... Uh, belt on here and uh, and we're gonna have a go so you can see how rapidly that's actually taking material off it's grinding at the right angle now and it's taken off a lot of material, and this, this is cold. It took me one minute to, uh, to move the camera around, and I hadn't dipped this in water yet. So, so basically, this is amazing. Anyway, on with the grinding. Now here is what we get with a 60 grit belt and about three or four minutes of work on a chisel that was the wrong angle to start with and it's a substantial chisel. Now the thing is, with a water wheel based sharpening system like the Tormac etc, doing this can take quite a long time. If you have got the wrong bevel on your tool, to actually grind it down needs a grinder or a belt sander of some sort, if you at all value your time. If sharpening is a therapeutic process and you don't mind spending tens of hours doing it, uh, then by all means, do it entirely from scratch with a honing guide and a water stone. But um, if you're a professional and if you have limited amount of time, then you need some sort of a machine-based system and that is the main benefit of having uh, a Sorby or just a standard, even a standard belt grinder will do okay. The nice thing about this is it will never blow up. Never say never. It is a solid, solid machine, well made in the UK and it's industrial level. Whereas the cheap ones, well we've gone through three or four of them upstairs in the last couple of years. So, um, anyhow. I'm now going to take this 60 grit and process through the grades of sandpaper and we'll end up with something creditably sharp. So time to change the belt. Loosen the protective side guards off and it's as simple as that. So I started off with a 60 grit because this uh, 
chisel was really mangled. And uh, line up the edge. If it was just in need of a touch up, I could start all the way up at 600 uh, or 1200 even, potentially, if it was just quick. So that's there, and we're done. And we're done. Time to move up to the, the next grit. Can you believe it? Once you've done the hard work, the initial grind, this is a doddle, as they say. So let's see, well, this is 240. So that's the 240 grit, and up to this point we haven't done anything at all. That's still cold. I have just put it in water, but it's still cold. It wasn't in water for that long. We haven't done anything at all about the back, and I can't really see if I've got a good enough edge at the front until I've done that. So this is where this tool comes into its own. Change that hole a little bit. Let's lock that off at 90 degrees. And the edge of this here runs perfectly true and flat with the face of that. So if you're very careful, and I'm saying very careful, you can run the machine and flatten that side off. And this is the only machine tool that I've seen that can reliably do this and you can be sure that it will be flat if you are careful. The problem is you're now removing a lot more metal and it will get hot fast. So you need to avoid that as much as possible. in the water and we're starting to get a surface with which we can work. So that's really, really good. Um, a lot of time there will be pitting, proper pitting here, and if you've got rust holes in the flat surface of your chisel, when that flat, where the front edge hits those pits, that will be a massive gouge through your um, cut, and it's just not good enough. And uh, I can actually still see a few here, so I'm going to have another go at this. The thing that you really need to be aware of, if you're doing a smaller chisel, or perhaps look at this Ashley Isles one, it bevels right down to a to a, an edge there. And that will actually go in through there. You need to be, you need to have the support of this. So this method will not work on every single tool. Now, this particular tool and many others uh, comes with the 3M or can come with 3M diamond belts. This is, I think they're called Trizact or something like that. And I've just not filmed going through the 600 and 1200 grit. This belt here, this here belt, is film is filming. I am filming it. 
and it is cutting at 3,000 grit, which is pretty awesome. I mean, this is razor sharp. That'll do nicely. And at the same time, loosen her off. Let's go back to 90 degrees. And we'll do the back, just for a fraction of a second. In the water. Okay. Now, as with every other sharpening method, in order to get the best cut, I think we need a honing. But before honing, I want to see just how sharp this is with only the machine. Uh, it's not quite, it is shaving. It's not quite shaving. There's that uh, Triton. Okay, so that is that's cutting this bit of bit of paper. Not. It's it's feeling a bit sore like, but you know what? This is sharper than many chisels I have borrowed from professional carpenters. Not good enough for a guitar builder, maybe, but very, very sharp. So this is a piece of leather put onto a nice flat piece of maple. And uh, going with the grain, add some honing compound. This is a buffing polish. It has a grit in it. Now you can see that is nice and shiny already. Just not quite shiny enough. And even at this microscopic level, what I'm doing is pulling a burr, and this is pulling a burr up like that, and then this side is pulling a burr up like that. And it is actually leaving little metal on here. And that there, where's that? This should now that is razor sharp. And here is the perfect example of what we're talking about. This piece of card here, or paper, that edge was cut after we honed the blade. That rough edge was cut after still the 3000 grit, but after using the 3000 grit belt on the sander. It took a little bit longer than it could have because we've been using the Pro Edge and it does take 20 or 30 seconds to change the belts. <laughs> However, if I was doing 10 or 15 chisels, I could do all 10 or 15 chisels inside of an hour and have them all at this level. Whereas doing it by hand with water stones and the like is a much longer prospect. More fun, arguably, but uh, when time is a consideration, I don't think this can be beat. The pros and cons of this machine. The pros are it's fast. It is very efficient. It is very, very well made in this particular thing. The machines in general, using sanding machines, it is used by the industry. That's what they use. Knife makers use a belt sander to make their knives and then to sharpen them. 
you can buy all sorts of different belts from all sorts of different people and you can buy a cheap belt sander or you can go straight up to the Pro Edge by Sorby, which is just amazing. The other nice thing is that it does give you a perfectly flat, I nearly cut myself doing that, um, bevel on your chisel or plane blade, etc. And actually, this tutorial also covers plane blades um, on this tool. The cons are, oh, it's a little bit noisy. It's a little bit expensive. Sanding belts are not cheap, especially if you're going for 3M and the really, really, really good quality ones. Uh, you can invest 100 quid or 60 quid or 70 quid and get yourself some water stones and do it like that. If you're not going to be buying lots of chisels or you're not going to have people in your workshop beating them up for you, then this, it's probably not an investment for you. If you spend your life hunting through car boot sales and buying broken old handleless chisels pitted in rust, then yeah, go for it. Seriously, it cannot be beat. I was just having a conversation with one of my luthiers. Um, I turned off the filming and, he, and said, oh, this is an amazing tool. And he said, yes, I don't know if I could be without it in my life after having used it once. It is that useful. Okay. Now, email Christopher CrimsonGuitars.com if you want to argue with him. Now, this, this has been about belt sanders. In the next video in this series, I am going to be looking at Tormek style water wheels. Um, which are as useful and I've, I've been using for many many years. I've got the Triton and uh, I've got an Axman's to Power Tools one as well from many 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 years ago that is nowhere near as good. Uh, anyhow, actually talking about nopping drains, dropping names, uh, check out yandles.co.uk. They are my favorite supplier of tools and that's uh, who I get my um, most of my stuff from. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I just like supporting them because they're an awesome shop and uh, good to deal with. They stock both the Sorby Pro Edge and the Triton one that we're dealing with tomorrow. So, uh, and all of the accessories. There are many, many more accessories for the Sorby I've been using today for knife sharpening, etc. And you will see it appear later in this series um, because I love it. The question is, do I love it as much or more than my Waterstones? We shall have to see. Thanks for watching. Please, if this has been useful to you, subscribe to our channel, subscribe to the playlist that this video is a part of, and emphatically comment and click that like button because it really helps us with YouTube's algorithms and all that jazz. Uh, there are going to be many more videos in this series. If you have a sharpening technique that you want me to cover that you think I might not know about already, if you have got an argument with anything I've said today, I learn as much from you as you learn from me and I am not beyond coming back and apologizing and making the video again to say actually you know so and so on YouTube has said this and I tried it out and he's right. So uh, yeah please let me know and most importantly until then I did say stay sharp but that's just too cheesy. Have a good day. Goodbye.